Okay, so if you guys are watching this video and you're looking to move or relocate to Vancouver, in this video we're gonna go over everything cost of living in Vancouver, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, what's going on? Mark Parsons here with eXp Realty, deep in the heart of Greater Vancouver. And if you are someone that is interested in learning everything Vancouver, Canada, eating, working, playing, culture, really anything, make sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell right next to that to make sure you get notified every time we upload a brand new video about Vancouver and the surrounding areas here on the channel. Honestly, we get so many people reaching out about moving to or re relocating to Vancouver or even within the greater Vancouver area and we absolutely love it. It's what we do on a daily basis so if you are looking to move, relocate or you just want to come and hang out make sure to reach out. I will leave some links in the description as well as your contact info. We have your back and we want to take care of you. So let's jump into the video the cost of living in Vancouver Canada. First things first I have to put this right out there housing costs are high in Vancouver. It is is an expensive city to live in and whether you are looking to rent or buy housing costs are a key contributor to why Vancouver is continually ranked as the most expensive city in Canada. At that time, at the time of this recording, the, the benchmark price for a single family home in Vancouver was a million forty-five thousand eight hundred and thirteen thousand for a townhome and six hundred and eighty-three thousand for a condo. But keep in mind that those are benchmark prices, meaning there will be some areas for less and some for substantially more. Next we have rental costs. So we know that buying a home in Vancouver is expensive, but what about renting? Unfortunately, renters in the city are not catching a break either. For years now, vacancy rates have been very low in Vancouver. In some areas, less than 1%. Vancouver is a beautiful city and, and people wanna live here and this keeps upward pressure on rental rates. Even during the pandemic, when many thought that uh, rental prices and housing prices would go down which they haven't according to numbio.com the average cost for a one-bedroom apartment in the city center of Vancouver is 2050 per month that's up about $40 from last year outside the city center average rents drop a little bit down to approximately 1580 If you are a family looking for a home with three bedrooms or more, the average rent for a three bedroom in the city is over $3,600 and over $2,800 outside of the city center. If you're moving to Vancouver, you're gonna want to run the numbers to see if you can afford to purchase a property or whether you will need to rent a home at first. If you would like to connect with a great mortgage broker who can give you clarity on your numbers, comment below and I can get you connected. Next we have utility costs. So now you are in a home regardless if you are buying or renting let's talk about the average monthly cost for all your utilities. Right now if you're renting a two-bedroom home it will likely cost you somewhere around $120 to $150 per month. That's your heating, electricity and gas. Some rentals will be rent plus utilities and others may include them in your monthly rent which definitely helps if you're a homeowner as you will also have additional costs like water and garbage pickup which also add to your monthly bill. Of course if you're a homeowner of a strata property you will have the, the monthly strata fees as well which can range anywhere from $300 to $650 per month or more depending on the building and the amenities and the upkeep required. Keep in mind those utility costs do not include things like your phone, internet or cable. So how much does that cost? You can find lower cost internet and mobile phone plans if you search but on average the cost for internet in Vancouver will be approximately seventy to hundred dollars per month for a high gig data data plan for a mobile phone. I personally pay between 110 and 120 for a 20 gigabyte cell phone plan with everything else unlimited. If this sounds expensive on a global scale Canada is known for higher cost cell phone plans. For a basic cable package you may be able to get by with about $30 
$5 per month, but that would be the bare bones package, which wouldn't get you that much. If you are a TV person and want all the bells and whistles, you're probably looking at about $100 per month. I personally don't have cable. I pay $110 per month for the fastest internet my provider has for residential areas, and I stream all of my content. The two biggest providers in Vancouver are Telus and Shaw, and both companies will offer discounts uh, for bundling services. So having your home phone, uh, mobile phone, TV, and internet with Telus, for example, will cost you a lot less than getting those services individually. So definitely shop around because both companies are always offering incentives for new customers. Next, we have transportation. If you like biking, Vancouver has over 450 kilometers or 279 miles of bike lanes throughout the city. Cycling is the city's fastest growing travel method. There are tons of Moby bike sharing stations throughout the city. And if you're right downtown, particularly in the West End and Yale Town, there are also plenty of bike rental shops to choose from. If you are not into cycling, it's all good. Vancouver has a great transit system, including the C bus and SkyTrain network, as well as the West Coast Express and plenty of express buses and regular bus services to fill in all the gaps there. The, the transit system is divided into three zones. Monthly passes to access the transit system are $98 for a one zone pass and $131 for a two zone and $177 for a three zone pass. And if transit doesn't make the cut for a trip you need, you can always order taxis, Uber or Lyft to get around the city. Now, if you live further out of the city and prefer to drive as opposed to taking transit gasoline prices fluctuate a lot in Vancouver just like everywhere else but you can likely expect to be paying somewhere between a dollar 20 or a dollar 50 per liter of gasoline now if you're a family and you need child care child care costs are expensive and the wait list for daycare facilities is usually quite long I've personally experienced wait lists of up to a year when trying to find child care so if you know that you're going to need a spot get on on the list in the area that you're living as soon as possible. The average monthly cost for a full day private child care is on average $1,180 per month for children ages five and under. Um, Dining out, best known for our salmon and local seafood. There is an incredible food and restaurant scene here in Vancouver, but we also have incredibly diverse and world-class restaurants. Regardless of what you are in the mood to eat, pick any culinary ethnicity and Vancouver will have lots of options to fit the bill. The beer and spirit scene in Vancouver is very impressive as well. There are many award-winning microbreweries and distilleries scattered throughout. If you want to go out on, you know, out for a night on the town for a nice meal, the average price for two people at a mid-range restaurant in Vancouver will run you approximately $75 to $80. And if you are heading to a high-end restaurant, you're probably looking at around $150 to $200. If you want to keep on Vancouver's local arts and culture scene, check out www.createastir.ca, an online publication that covers Vancouver's creative scene. But of course, we are not going to eat out all the time. We have to stock our fridge with groceries and cook some good meals at home as well. For groceries, there are lots of options. The Real Canadian Superstore, No Frills, Safeway, Thrifties, or for some of the more pricier options, you have Whole Foods and Urban Fair. Depending on the size of your family, your weekly grocery bill is probably going to be about $250 to $450 per week. At the end of the day, if you are moving to Vancouver, you will want to run the numbers. There are so many amazing places in Vancouver to live, but it is expensive. There are also lots of options outside of Vancouver in the immediate surrounding areas that are a little bit more affordable. And you know, with that comes a bit more of a commute. Okay guys, so that's going to do it for today's video, the cost of living in Vancouver. If you are somebody that is looking to move to Vancouver or relocate within the greater Vancouver area, or really just want to hang out with us here in Vancouver, I'm going to go ahead and leave all of our contact information in the description below. Send us an email, shoot us a text, give us a call because if you're moving here to Vancouver or relocating within the greater Vancouver area, we have your back. We got you covered and you know, we absolutely love doing it. It's what we do every single day and it's what we're good at. So with all that being said, my name is Mark Parsons with eXp Realty. I'm from the greater Vancouver area. So if you have any questions at all, 
all, let us know in the comments below and we will see you guys on the next video.